welcome to Smokey, Steve, and Mark. I'm Mark, and I'm filling in for Steve this evening. Ah, you know he's still under the weather. Well, if you watched Coffee Break yesterday, you know he was under the weather, and he's not feeling any better today. It's just a cold. I mean, he's okay. So I told him, don't you worry about a thing. I got this tonight, and he will be back next week with an all-new Steve will try it. <laughs> so how the heck are you? Oh, it's super nice to see you. What are we going to get into tonight now? Well, I figure we'll do, it, you, it's going to be like Mondays with Mark, but on a Thursday. Thursdays with Mark. I don't know, it just doesn't roll off the tongue the same way as Mondays with Mark does, does it? No, no it doesn't. But either way, oh, we have a recipe tonight. It's that time of year again. It's our annual New Year's cake. We're going to make that tonight. I'm super thrilled to, uh, to share this one with you. And we even have a little project too. We're going to get caught up on some chit chat. But, um, but yeah, it is the first time I've seen you since Christmas. So how the heck are you? How was your Christmas? Oh, I hope it was nice. I really hope you had a good Christmas this year. We did. We had a really nice Christmas. It was very, very nice. We were, it was, it was. I, I'm, I'm glad too. It was really nice. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking all things New Year's. Yeah, because our recipe is for New Year's and our project is for New Year's. And it's kind of hard to believe that 2023 is like almost over and done with, huh? So do you have any plans for New Year's Eve? Are you going to have a little New Year's Eve party? Or how about New Year's Day? You having friends and family over for dinner? I'm not exactly sure what we're doing this year. We usually are pretty calm. You know, we don't we don't really party, you know. And um, New Year's Eve, it's like um, all we can do to stay up to watch the ball drop, you know. And then after the ball drops, it's like we go to bed, <laughs> you know. Oh, my gosh. I remember back in the day, whoo, you know, we would have some some pretty extreme parties for New Year's Eve. Stay up all night, get up early the next morning too, do it all over again. Oh, where did those days go, right? <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, oh yeah, so I was out shopping, you know, of course I was, you know, taking advantage of all the after Christmas sales and they're everywhere. Y'all, Rite Aid, Rite Aid, everything is already 75% off, all their Christmas stuff. Ah, and I'm like notorious for getting like, you know, getting deals on Christmas stuff after Christmas to use next year. Well, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, wrapping paper, 75% off. Like, I don't know. It's nothing to store it for a year. And I got some really cool stuff, like, that I'm sure we're going to use here, you know, on the channel. Maybe I should do an after Christmas haul next week. What do you think? Oh, maybe I will. <laughs> Even the Dollar Tree, all their Christmas stuff is half off. I got a bunch of stuff there, too. But I just got to, I just got to say something. What does Steve say? Oh, he, he calls them, oh, the monsters, the monsters, because all the Christmas stuff, it seems overnight disappeared and was replaced with Valentine's Day stuff. It's not even January. Oh my gosh. I don't know if it constitutes calling them monsters or not, but this does. Oh yeah. I mean, Easter, really? Come on. That's, that's definitely, definitely too early. I was, I was, I was shocked to see that. Easter, come on, like, that, it, I, that's getting out of hand now, I don't know, in my opinion, but, um, but I don't know, yeah, so if you're into that, go, go check out the sales, because they're everywhere, big lots, they're already 50% off now, too, um, so, yeah, maybe I'll do a haul next week, well, we'll see, but, um, oh, oh, and how about that full Christmas moon, <gasps> Wasn't it just stunning? Oh my gosh! And that was the that was the last full moon of the year, and uh, it was the cold moon. I just I found myself just staring at it. It was just absolutely beautiful, wasn't it? And the next full moon, well, that's not until January the twenty fifth, and that would be our wolf moon, and uh, of course the first full moon of the new year. <laughs> so uh, oh, I had to share those pictures. It was just so beautiful. It really was. I hope you got to see it. Um, because, gosh, I don't know. We don't really usually have a full moon on Christmas, you know? Well, I guess it wasn't really actually on Christmas. I think it was the day after. I'll have to check the exact dates. But either way, that was Christmas night, and it looked full as heck. So, but anyway, so yes, back to New Year's. So, okay, so... Are you having a New Year's Eve party? Are you having people over for New Year's Day dinner? Well, I have just the thing for dessert. It is our annual cake that we make. It's like its own tradition here on the channel again. It's kind of made its way into the yearly traditions, you know. And uh, we have a great one to make this year. Oh, wait do you see it. Can I say pear cardamom cake? Oh, 
Okay, are we ready to make this cake? Ooh, we're talking about a pear cardamom cake. Okay, here are the ingredients. All right, so we have five smaller pears here, and uh, the best type of pear to use for baking, including this cake, would be a Bosque pear, or any pear that's uh, pretty, pretty firm, okay? And uh, we peeled them and cored them, and we left the stems on, okay? In addition to that, we have a half a cup of buttermilk at room temperature, two tablespoons of molasses, one tablespoon of fresh grated ginger, two large eggs at room temperature, two teaspoons of vanilla, one cup of sugar, and for our dry ingredients here, we have uh, one and three quarters of a cup of flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and one half teaspoon of kosher salt. And in my bowl here, oh yeah, <laughs> we have three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature. And then we prepared our pan. That would be a 10 inch uh, uh, two pan or angel food pan. And we generously greased that and floured it as well. Okay, so the first thing we did was creamed our butter up until it was nice and smooth on medium-high speed, and that must be about a minute. And to that, we're going to add our sugar, our vanilla, our ginger, oh boy, <laughs> and our molasses. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to mix this on low speed for about a minute until it's all nice and incorporated. And then we're going to switch that up to medium high until it's light and fluffy. Oh, yes. Yum, yum, yum. All right. So next we add our eggs and we're going to add those one at a time. And we're going to mix that on medium-low just until it's incorporated. And then we're going to scrape the bowl down again and add our second egg. <laughs> okay, so now we take our dry ingredients. We're going to whisk that all together until it's nice and thoroughly combined there. And, um... And, um, hmm, I think we're missing something here. Oh, yeah, this is a pear cardamom cake. We need cardamom! So what the heck is cardamom anyway? And what do you do if you don't have it? Well, cardamom has made quite the name for itself in the spice world, and sometimes it's referred to the queen of spices. And that's due to its complex flavor profile, which makes it perfect to use in both savory and sweet foods. Um, it is a pod spice found in the ginger family, and you'll find cardamom pods, shelled seeds, or ground cardamom as well. Oh, you will find find coffee infused with cardamom pods all over the Middle East, as well as being used for, for sweets and for savory foods all over the world. Now ground cardamom, it does lose its flavor pretty fast, so it's best to use the cardamom pods and grind it yourself. And one pod is equal to one sixth of a teaspoon. So if you need a teaspoon, you need six pods of cardamom. And that's what we need today in our recipe, one teaspoon of ground cardamom. But what if you don't have cardamom. After all, it has been a little difficult to find recently due to a shortage from back in 2019. Well, both cinnamon, nutmeg, and actually allspice too are all widely recommended as substitutions for cardamom. And the best way to do it is a combination of cinnamon and allspice in equal parts. So if you need a teaspoon of cardamom, just substitute one half teaspoon of cinnamon and one half teaspoon of allspice. So now we're going to add our dry mixture and our buttermilk, you know, alternately. So we're going to start with about a third of our dry mixture. We can put that all in there like that. We're going to mix it up on, on low speed just until it's combined. Then we're going to add half of our buttermilk. one third of our dry ingredients. 
is a really good looking batter, if I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, all right. So now we are going to uh, scrape our batter into our prepared pan. Okay, let me just kind of smooth it out a little bit there, making it as even as possible there. Okay, and then we're just going to give that a little tap there, let it settle down and get any air bubbles. I think we're good though. We are good. All right, let's grab those pears. Now we're going to press our pears all the way down in like that. And, uh, you know, kind of, I don't know, evenly space them uh around your cake pan here okay i think that looks pretty pretty good and now we're ready to bake y'all okay so we're gonna bake in a preheated 350 degree oven until the cake is nice and golden brown and a cake tester comes out clean that'll be about one hour now you know what check it at around 20 minutes because the pears have a tendency to topple over a little bit at the 20 minute mark oh yes you can take the cake out and use the stem on top to straighten them right back out put them back in the oven and let it continue to bake and make sure you put your pan on a pan. I think we are we are ready. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Oh, look. Nice, nice, nice. I did have to get one of my pairs up at the 20 minute mark, but the rest of them stayed pretty good. So let's just double check here. We are good, y'all. We are good. Mm. Okay, so now we're going to let this cool down completely before we put our icing on. For our icing, we have one cup of powdered sugar, a quarter teaspoon of ground cardamom, and about four tablespoons of heavy cream. So we're going to add our cream to our powdered sugar here, and we're going to add, oh, about three tablespoons to start with, and we're going to whisk that all up until we get uh, the consistency that we want. And that is exactly what we are looking for. You want to be able to kind of like, you know, draw a line in it like that. But then when you pick it up, it's nice and easy to drizzle. Oh, oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cover this up with a damp towel, just like that. And we're going to set this aside until our cake is ready to receive our icing. <laughs> Hmm, what am I doing now? <laughs> well, actually, I'm glazing our cake. So to do that, we have uh, four tablespoons of really any type of preserves or jelly that you like. I'd recommend, like, like apricot, you know, but you could use any kind. How about this? Does it get any more perfect? Ginger? Really? This was a gift from Steve's mom. Perfect for this cake! And what we're doing is, I pop this in the microwave for about 20 seconds, and now we're just kind of glazing our peaches and glazing the entire cake. It'll give it a nice shine and add a little bit of sweetness to it. And voila, look how shiny and beautiful it looks. <laughs> okay, so I did um, allow the cake to cool completely and then I took it out of the pan and put it on a nice little stand because I mean, this cake calls, you need a nice little stand for this kind of cake, right? <laughs> Definitely. Now, if you have any trouble getting your cake out of that pan, just run a knife around the outside and the inside hole there and underneath too, and then lift it out with two spatulas and you'll be just fine. I didn't have any trouble, but uh, if if you use an angel food pan, I think all angel food pans, you know, they can't have non-stick on it because angel food batter needs to cling to the pan to keep it, you know, nice and fluffy. So, uh, so that's just a little helpful little tip there to get your, your cake out and onto a stand like this. So next, we ice. Oh yeah, so let's see how our frosting is. Up, oh, still perfect, still perfect. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, and we are just going to, uh, you know, put our icing on there, let it drip down the sides and down the center like that. And, of course, you could use as much or as little as you want of this. Uh, it's absolutely delicious, though. I'm going to use all of it. Go. Okay. And to finish things off, because it's New Year's Eve, we add, I'm bedazzle it a little bit, coarse sugar. <laughs> 
Oh, yes! Nice, nice, nice! Oh, I think this is gonna be perfect for either, you know, a New Year's Eve party or, or a New Year's Day dinner. Oh, and there's our annual New Year's cake, y'all. Hair cardamom cake. Ah! Okay, so it's DIY time. Oh, well, you know I couldn't leave you without without some kind of decor for our New Year's celebration. Whether you're having a New Year's Eve party or you're having a New Year's Day dinner, we are gonna make some, oh yeah, upcycled bottle candles that are both elegant and really easy to make at the same time. They're gonna look really, really nice right on our table. You could put them up on a mantle for just like, like some decor. Oh, and this was a project that I knew I wanted to do this season. I don't know, it was gonna be Thanksgiving, Christmas, or New Year's. I decided on New Year's. And I hope you like it. And chances are you can make this completely for free, depending on if you have everything we need to make it. It is an upcycled project, so what do we need? Well, you need some bottles. Now I know you have some empty wine bottles or champagne bottles, liquor bottles from Christmas and Thanksgiving. So you just want to kind of wash them off real good inside and out and make sure you get the labels off, okay? In addition to that, you're going to need some greenery of some sort. Now I chose to go with some juniper that I have growing out front. I think it looks wonderful. You could also use evergreen as well. And then you'll need some taper candles. And that's it. That's all you need to make this, all right? So let's get started. This is so easy, y'all. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. Now, the concept behind this is, is that we're going to be putting our greenery inside of our bottles. So to do that, you're going to want to choose um, some nice branches uh, that you want to keep in mind. Uh, you want it to fit down inside the bottle, too. So take your bottle, like say if you're going to use that, take your bottle and put the stem right down to the bottom. Now, that's going to be too high. We want the greens to be down in the, the widest part of our bottle there so we would snip off the bottom. Now you could do a full branch like these or we could do some smaller branches. So why don't I show you, let's do these smaller ones in here. So let me look because look, yes, they will fit real, real nice. So literally we're just going to push them down in there and if they get tight, don't you worry, just twist your bottle and apply gentle pressure and they'll fall down in like that. Okay, see, so he's up like that. So let's see, we'll do, how about we do this one? He'll sit a little lower. So let's put him down in there as well. Oh, he fits right in nice and even. Okay, a little tap there. And now we can take a, a, a dowel rod or a skewer or even some chopsticks and kind of arrange it the way we want. I want him to go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, perfect. Yes, just like that. All right, so next step, we're going to fill it up with water. It's a spray bottle. I thought it'd be perfect for here. Yeah, this works well. Okay, so we're going to fill it all up with water. Almost to the top like that. Okay, okay. And now we're going to take our taper candle and we're going to put it right in the top. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to firmly push it down and twist the bottle so that it stays in nice and tight. You'll see some of the wax come up around the outside like that. Okay, all right. So now that's in there like that. Now, alternately, you could take a lighter and you could melt the bottom of this and uh, and like secure it in nice and tight like that. Now, if you happen to have a bottle where the, um, the candle is too small, don't you worry about a thing. Just get some electrical tape and wrap it around the bottom of your taper until it's thick enough to fit down in. Now, if you do use a different type of tape, make sure you watch your candle as it burns because it will light on fire. But of course, I'm sure you're, you're safety oriented and you're going to watch your candles no matter what. <laughs> and that 
is all there is to it. Check it out. Isn't it pretty? Now, depending on how long you want to keep these, just change that water every every two days or so to keep it looking nice and fresh. And you can have this indefinitely, really. You know, it's very, very nice. Pair them up. Make you know, like three or four of them. I think they turned out nice. I really love these. And on top of that one there, I just put some allspice pods in there too to float on top. That one. And then we have, uh, I used a green one here. You can still see inside there and we have another one right here oh what do you see i'm gonna set them all up you know group them together maybe add some tea lights down below put them on a, a nice tablecloth or a placemat maybe run some streamers in between them for new years you know but there it is that's that this is our uh let's see upcycled bottle candle holder That was so much fun. Oh my gosh, the cake and the project was, oh my gosh, I can see, I can see the videotaping here and it looks like the candles are right up against like the back wall there where the, where the candles are. They're not, they're not at all. I mean, they're like, oh gosh, they're about eight inches away from the back wall. They're maybe even a foot. It's hard to tell on camera. And here's where I burned down the entire apartment building. No, I better not say that. Let's take that out of the universe. <laughs> oh my gosh. But anyway, oh, how about that cake, y'all? Oh, oh my goodness. It is, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see. It is, it's so, mm, mm, so moist and so delicious. And what a showstopper cake too, you know? And let me tell you, pears, well, pears, they symbolize um, good health and prosperity. And cardamom, well, they symbolize inner peace and positivity. And we have them both right in this cake. It couldn't get more perfect for New Year's, right? <laughs> See, always thinking, always thinking. <laughs> no, seriously, it is an awesome cake. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give it a shot too. It's really, really quite delicious. And, um, the project, again, really, really, really simple to do, too. And I hope you like that one as well. Oh, my gosh. Well, I am pooped. Let me tell you, went back to work. Oh, we were busy as heck because we're trying to, you know, well, we're, we're, the schedule's all messed up because of the holidays and being closed and uh, rescheduling people. And they were all on today. We did over a hundred patients today. It was, it was quite busy. I got home pretty late, so I'm sure this video will come out late. But, um... <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Thank you so, so much for spending your time with me. Definitely hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when we have a new video coming out. All of our contact information is listed right down below. That's our, our PO box and our email address. If you have any questions on anything we did today, go ahead and shoot me an email. Check us out over on Facebook, X, and Instagram, too y'all <laughs> thank you thank you again and uh i don't know i don't know as we get ready for 2024 let's try to make it a, a positive positive new year i really want this to be a fantastic new year we had such a wonderful time this whole holiday season with you there is no reason why that can't roll on over into the new year thanks again everybody and we'll see you next time okay <laughs>